Hello from Flyer at Aero Expo. It's day two. The sun's threatening to come out, so hopefully it's going to be another good day. Let's take a look around. So I'm here now with Mike Miller-Smith, who's the chief executive of Aerobility. How's the show been for you, Mike? Uh, morning. It's been uh, really great so far. We've uh, had a good steady stream of people coming through. Um, we've been showing people what the charity does, getting disabled people flying. Excellent. Now I understand also you're using this as an opportunity to promote your equipment donation scheme. Can you tell us about that please? Yeah, what it is every aviator out there or uh, retired or, or even people that are learning to fly end up with cupboards full of uh, flying related yeah, paraphernalia true. which they don't use. So we'd be uh, really grateful to um, receive that gear. We can recycle it, use it ourselves, uh, sell it online uh, and raise money for the charity. And if people aren't coming here, where else can they donate? Well, um, through um, Flyer Magazine, for example, we are trying to publicise um, details of where to send it. Our head office at Blackbush Airport, and uh, we can receive it there and uh, and make great use of it. And I take it there's details on the Aerobility website? That's correct, yeah. And what is the website address, please? It's www.aerobility.com. One of the new aircraft we've got here today at Aero Expo is the Savannah XLS from Santos Ultralights. Here with one, of, with one of the directors, Pete Wilson. Pete, can you tell us about the aircraft and how it differs from the VG, please? Yes, certainly. Um, the, the VG, the wing, is exactly the same as the VG. Sure. It's just a new, improved uh, model. It has the uh, rounded fuselage, the five inch wider cockpit, uh, four inches longer, total glass roof in it, a glass instrument package as well which gives you better uh, readings of all the engine instruments and everything. Um, the the takeoff and run is about the same as the, the VG. The crews were hoping to be uh, probably about 7 to 10 mile an hour better than the, uh, the VG. Okay. It was cruising about 107 mile an hour. Um, still with a takeoff run, you know, probably about 25 metres stick to off the ground. Okay, and will it be available at the same time as the VG or will the XLS be replacing it? No, it won't be replacing it, it'll still be running alongside because the, the XLS is going to be quite a bit more expensive, it's going to be round about £36,000. Uh, the VG itself will be round about twenty nine to 30000 And so what's that £36,000 going to cover? What would be that, included? That's everything you see, you, everything, the instrument package, the engine, the propeller, all the, apart from the inspections and the paint on the aeroplane, that is the final cost. That's including VAT as well. It's been a fantastic weekend here for aerobatic displays. We've had Guy Westgate doing his amazing glider displays. We've had Gerald Cooper in the X-Air. And of course, we've had the Trig team, one half of whom is with us here now, Richard Grace. Hiya. Richard, good to see you. Nice How's see the you weekend too. been for you? Absolutely fantastic, yeah. It's certainly had the weather for it. Um, we've had two great displays so far, one yesterday, one today, obviously. And yeah, it's just going really well. Bit of a crosswind, but hey, keeps you on your toes. And of course, you're displaying again tomorrow. For yeah, correct. Yeah, tomorrow. half past one tomorrow, we're, we're displaying here again, yeah. And how do you prepare for a display like this? Um, myself and Dave have been flying together for years, about eight years. So that, that is all part of it. You've got to sort of trust one another. And really, it's just a case of practicing. Um, as we discussed prior to this interview, it can be a bit tiring. We're doing another one this evening and it can be a bit tiring to do two in a day. So yeah, just really keeping your hand in at it, doing it a lot. I think that's and about how long is the display itself? It's 10 minutes start to finish from the point we run in to normally the point we land. So and tell us what the sort of pressures you're under, what are the sort of Gs you're the, facing in there? To the maximum of the aeroplane really, which is about plus six, minus three during the display. Um, Dave doesn't do so much of the negative stuff because that's my job as the leader is to do all the upside down bit, but I enjoy it, so who really cares? And how do you go about planning a display like this? Um, we sit down very carefully and think about it. You've got to um, be very careful with how you deal with the, the energy. You've got to try and conserve the energy so you don't ever have to go away from the airfield to climb for height and all that kind of stuff. So that's one of our major things that we do is just sit down and really plan the sequence because the Pitts is not an overpowered aeroplane like the like the extreme that Joe, Gerald's flying. He could do just about anything in that. but. Um, we have to really think carefully. There's certain manoeuvres we can do where we build energy and there's certain ones we do where we certainly lose it all. Absolutely. So just have to get them in the right order. Now one of the other aircraft, of course, you're very well associated with is yep. the Spitfire. Yeah, correct. Do you still get to fly that much? I do, yeah. I've, I've done about 150 hours in it total since I started flying it. That was when I was 23. I'm 28 now. Um, and yeah, I've certainly done probably 10 to 15 hours in it this year. 
I did the display at the Duxford Air Show in it last weekend um, and another couple of displays just private events earlier in the year so yes I'm certainly keeping my hand in it that too. And are they solo displays? Yes solo displays. I, in fact I was flying around with the Bouchon last weekend quite fast the Bouchon. Well, Struggled to keep up with it. <laughs> and how, how different is that for you the disciplines involved with the, with the solo display or display with Yeah it's the same thing I mean I have a sequence that I have planned it's the sequence that I've always tended to go for in any I've been lucky enough to find another couple of warbirds and in any one of those I've always done that same display um, and again it's the same deal it's energy management um, very much like Guy and the glider but if, yeah. if he gets it wrong he has to land whereas we can just climb for high sure. um, so yeah it's much the same really well that's great thanks a lot for no that I'm really looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow yeah fantastic thanks cheers, cheers. and we're here now with Graham Newby who's the acting CEO for the LAA How's the show been for you this weekend? It's been pretty good. I mean, the, the weather was a bit of a problem yesterday. It was a little bit quiet, but today has been excellent. Excellent. Now, it's obviously quite a tough marketplace, but the LAA seem to be dealing with things really well. Where do you see the market leading over the next year or two? Uh, you've got to say it's the, the more economic, light sport type aircraft. I think if the prices can be held down to a sensible level, then the, the market is good. But I think that's, that's where the crucial thing is. It's, just, it's, it's all down to money. You know, like homing engine or continental engine aircraft are going higher and higher and higher. So everybody's looking to the to the light sport type aeroplane. Are there any particular aircraft that are catching your eye at the moment? Um, I think something like the Bristol is, is good. It's good value for money. It's a nice aeroplane. It's well engineered, and it's the right sort of price. It's the price that a lot of people can afford. Well, it's been another great day at Aero Expo 2013. Plenty more to look forward to tomorrow. We'll see you then.